This video is going to be about enzymes. I'm going to try to go quickly. So remember, this is a video. You can pause it and rewind it if you need to. Enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions. Enzymes are also reusable. They are not part of the chemical reaction. They just speed up the chemical reaction. The shape determines what reactants or substrates the enzymes will bind with. Now pay attention to that word shape. We're going to be using it a lot. The shape determines the function of the enzymes. Enzymes are proteins. Proteins, the function of proteins is determined also by its shape. So it makes sense that the shape determines the function of enzymes as well. So let's understand the diagram here. We have the blue enzyme and we part of that enzyme is called the active site. So there's a place on the enzyme that has a specific shape that allows it to bind with a specific substrate. When that substrate comes in and binds with the enzyme, an enzyme substrate complex is formed. When this happens, the enzyme puts some pressure or tweaks the bonds in the substrate and causes the reaction to occur. It actually does it by lowering the activation energy so that the reaction can occur more spontaneously, more quickly. So the reaction occurs and then the products are released by the enzyme. Now notice the enzyme was not changed by that process. The shape determines the function of this enzyme, and as long as the shape is maintained, the enzyme will be able to continue to do its function. The other thing we need to focus on is that enzymes are specific. So each enzyme catalyzes a specific substrate. So it's helpful to use this concept, the lock and key model of enzyme action. A key fits a specific lock just like an enzyme fits a specific substrate. So what does that mean? We have a key over here, right? Every key fits a specific lock. So here's the key and you'll see how the shape of the key is specific to this lock. Just like we have the enzyme here, the shape of the active site of that enzyme is specific to a substrate. So you'll see how the shape of this substrate fits with this specific enzyme. So every enzyme only fits specific substrates just like every key is shaped to fit a specific lock. So we're talking about shape. When an enzyme loses its shape it's called B coming denatured, or in this case I've written denaturation or denaturation of proteins. When enzymes lose their shape, they be, that's called becoming denatured. So if the shape determines the function of the enzyme, then when the enzyme loses its shape, it cannot do its function. So when an enzyme becomes denatured, then it can no longer do its function because when an enzyme becomes denatured it loses its shape and that changes the active site and does not allow the enzyme to perform its function. So let's look at two examples of factors that affect enzyme activity. First we're going to look at the effect of temperature on enzyme activity. So we have a graph here Along the y-axis, we have enzyme activity increasing from lower enzyme activity to higher enzyme activity. And along the x-axis here, we have temperature increasing along the x-axis. So you'll see as the temperature increases, the enzyme activity increases to an optimum temperature. And then once it goes above the optimum temperature, you'll see the enzyme activity decreases rather quickly. In this case, the optimum temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, which is actually body temperature for humans. So if this was a human enzyme, obviously it would be optimized to work at body temperature. Once it goes above 
the optimum temperature, you'll see how the activity drops off rather sharply. That's because above 37 degrees Celsius, the enzyme begins to denature, which means it loses its shape. Let's look at the other example. The next example is the effect of pH on enzyme activity. So here we have the same graph with the same y-axis, enzyme activity, but now the x-axis represents pH from a very acidic 0 pH to a very basic 14 pH. So we have two different enzymes here, and you'll see they are optimized to work in two different pH ranges. Enzyme A has an optimum pH of 3, and we know that because we find the highest point of activity, enzyme activity, and then we draw a line down, and we see that enzyme A has an optimum pH of 3. If we compare that to enzyme B, we find the highest point of activity, which is here, and then we draw a line down, and we see that enzyme B has an optimum pH of 7. So these are two different enzymes and they have two different pH ranges. Now it's interesting, you start with the optimum pH and if you go above that pH you'll see it drops off rather quickly and if you go below that pH, optimum pH, the enzyme activity drops off rather quickly. Same thing with enzyme A, when you go above the pH the enzyme activity drops off very quickly. When you go below the P optimum pH the enzyme activity also drops off rather significantly. And again, the cause is the enzyme becoming denatured. The enzyme is able to keep its shape at the optimum pH, but when you go above the optimum pH or below the optimum pH, the enzyme begins to lose its shape. And when an enzyme loses its shape, it's no longer able to do its function. I hope that was helpful.